The film begins with a couple preparing for a romantic vacation. Jess and Gerald's marriage is experiencing difficulties, so they travel to Alabama for some time apart in the hopes of reigniting their romance. Jesse observes a dog devouring a carcass, causing the group to stop. Gerald honks the horn, causing the dog to retreat. The couple arrives at a remote lake house, and Jesse is concerned about the stray dog they encountered earlier. While Gerald is taking Viagra, Jesse feeds the outside dog. Gerald arrives, frightens the dog away, and informs Jesse that the meat she is feeding the dog is expensive. They re-enter the residence but leave the door unlocked. Jesse quickly dons a new slip dress and places the tag on a shelf above the bed. Then, she assumes a seductive position on the bed and indicates that she is prepared. Gerald enters the room with handcuffs and Jesse chuckles. He restrains Jesse with handcuffs secured to the bedposts on each wrist. She appears somewhat surprised, but she continues. Then, Gerald takes a second pill of Viagra and places his water glass on the same shelf above the bed. He begins to act out his fantasy of a stranger raping her, telling her to scream for help despite the fact that no one is within miles to hear her. When she tells him to stop and empty the coffers and he responds, what if I don't? She plays along only half-heartedly. Jesse yells at him to cease, and Gerald retreats. Then, he accuses her of making no effort to revive their relationship. Jesse informs him that this is unnecessary, to which Gerald responds that he was merely attempting to do something more exciting. We discover that Gerald has not touched Jesse in months, and it is odd that he desired this. When you least anticipate it in the midst of their argument, Gerald suffers a stroke and collapses on top of her. Jesse takes a moment to realize he's dead, and she accidentally pushes him to the floor. She tries to move the handcuffs up the bedposts, but it doesn't work, leaving her trapped. She keeps crying out, wake up, wake up, and quickly notices a pool of blood surrounding Gerald's head. After several hours, she hears a noise outside. As the night grows darker, Jesse greets the stray dog as he enters through the open door. Jesse tries to scare the dog away from Gerald's blood, but it bites a chunk out of Gerald's arm and eats it. Gerald abruptly stands up and begins to speak, reacting to the missing skin and muscle on his arm. But Jesse notices that his body is still on the floor. She is clearly hallucinating at this point. Gerald makes fun of Jess's strained marriage and his erectile dysfunction. He then informs her that she has already squandered hours doing nothing and is suffering from dehydration and fatigue. Jesse miraculously pulls a hand out of a cuff and escapes. She gloats to Gerald, but when she turns around, the real Jesse is still handcuffed to the bed. Jesse tells herself, the one who is still trapped, that escaping is simple. Gerald and the confident Jesse tell her things about herself and Gerald that she has never had the courage to admit. They remind her of the glass of water above the bed. She slants the shelf and gets the glass of water into her hand, but she can't get it all the way to her mouth, so she puts it back on the shelf. The dog then bites another chunk out of Gerald's arm and begins feasting on his body. Jess's hallucinations remind her of the shelf label she rolled into a drinking straw. She reclaims the water and consumes it through the straw. Following this, she falls asleep. When she awakens in the dark, she sees a tall, deformed, and obscured figure revealing a bag containing various bones and trinkets. She closes her eyes and declares that you are not real. Gerald, however, seems to imply that the figure is death waiting to claim her. Then Gerald begins to refer to Jessie as Mouse, which disturbs her. This recalls her father Tom, who affectionately called her Mouse. As they prepare to observe a solar eclipse, he has her sit on his lap while he performs a masturbation. Jesse awakens from this horrifying memory. Due to the lack of blood circulation, her hands are painful and she experiences severe cramping. Flies are swarming around the body of Gerald. Soon, Gerald and Jesse's vision of her taunt her by suggesting that she never recovered from her father's assault and married a man identical to her father. Gerald teases Jesse about the disfigured man she saw whom he refers to as the Moonlight Man and indicates what he believes to be a bloody footprint on the floor. Gerald informs her that the man will return that evening and requests that she keep her wedding ring available for his box of trinkets. After closing her eyes, Jessie counts to 10. Then, she recalls a time after the assault when her father entered her room and coerced her into keeping the incident a secret. She promises not to reveal what transpired to anyone. The Moonlight Man is licking her feet when she awakens, but it is actually the dog. 
it continues to consume Gerald's remains. The night after the assault, when Jess's mother asks her about the eclipse, she has another flashback. She cuts her hand by excessively squeezing the glass, smashes the water glass and slashes her wrist so that she can peel back the skin and slip her bloody hand through the cuff. She then drags the bed to the counter, grabs the handcuff's key, and releases the other hand. Then she drinks water and uses sanitary napkins to bandage her bloody wrist. However, she collapses on the floor due to blood loss and exhaustion. Jesse sees Gerald's disfigured face when she awakens. As she exits the room, the artificial moonlight is at the end of the hallway. She approaches him with confidence and gives him her wedding ring for his trinket box. She then walks to her car and drives away. She can't keep her eyes open and begins hallucinating again. She notices the eclipse, and the moonlight man approaches her ear, whispering the word mouse. The car then collides with a tree. People from a nearby house come out to help her after hearing the noise. Jessie writes a letter to her 12-year-old self six months later, struggling to write with her injured hand. Voiceovers and scenes describe how she pretended to have amnesia about the entire ordeal of being cuffed in order to avoid painful questions. But every night, the Moonlight Man appears in front of her, carrying a pair of handcuffs in his trinket box. Jesse spends some of Gerald's life insurance money to establish a charity for sexual abuse victims. She also learns from the news about a serial murderer who has acromegaly, a condition that causes a person to have an abnormally huge forehead, jaw, hands, and feet. The assassin digs up crypts, taking bones and gems, and consuming the faces of male dead. This explains why he didn't hurt Jesse and why Gerald's face was damaged. She eventually discovers that the Moonlight Man is genuine and not a hallucination. Jesse enters the courtroom as the Moonlight Guy is being sentenced and demands his attention. After she has finished her evidence at his court, she exits the building and walks into the street, which is the final scene of the film. The movie is quite exciting, but it also has a weird character to it. We appreciate you watching and hope to see you again soon.